Well, mining has been a bedrock of Idaho's economy since before the Gem State became a state. But one environmental nonprofit says abandoned mines are leaving a legacy that is harming the landscape. Jude Binkley spoke with the Idaho Conservation League about a state mining report that says the state is littered with abandoned mines. That's right, Brian. This report says there are thousands of abandoned mines across Idaho, and responsibility for cleaning up those mines can often fall on taxpayers. Mining one of the industries that built Idaho. We have a pretty extensive mining history. We are called the Jump State after all. To better understand how that piece of the state's history has impacted the environment, the Idaho Conservation League put together a comprehensive report on mining in the Jump State. Data shows there are about 8,800 abandoned mines across Idaho that could have impacts on human health and the environment. Generally speaking, you know, we often see things like contaminated soils and dust, uh, heavy metals, contamination of water, um, often things like arsenic that you really don't want in your drinking water or in your rivers. One example is the Triumph Mine east of Ketchum, long abandoned with impacts still being felt today. That site has had impacts from arsenic in the water um, and tailings and contaminated dust on the site as well. The industry that settled the West has turned into the Wild West when it comes to who's responsible for cleaning up those mines. The mining companies aren't there anymore. Either they're just so long ago, those companies don't exist, or the companies are more modern but have gone bankrupt. There's no one to hold accountable there. So, you know, it moves on down the line. Responsibility for the old sites could then fall on the EPA, land management agencies, or the state itself. In 1999, the state legislature created a law requiring one-third of the Idaho mine license tax to go into an abandoned mine land reclamation fund. However, revenue from that tax has plummeted, and the Idaho Department of Lands predicts the mine reclamation fund will become insolvent in 2027. At least let's not make this problem worse by creating more abandoned mine sites than we already have. The Idaho Conservation League says change starts with more responsible mining practices and having a better understanding of hazards that abandoned mines pose. And that history is interesting, um, but we also have to recognize that there, there's a, a dirtier side to that history. And those abandoned mines, um, not only should they be cleaned up to the extent that we can, but it also should remind us as we head into the future, and there's a lot of mining interest currently right now, of kind of what can go wrong and what to avoid um, in the future so we don't continue to make this problem worse. The Idaho Conservation League says old mining sites can also be on private property and the property's owner is then liable for cleaning it up. Now, Brian, the nonprofit is also advocating for essentially a Good Samaritan legislation that would allow a group to come in and clean up the site without assuming the environmental uh, responsibility for it, essentially. Well, if there's so many of these around the state, what should somebody do? I mean, I, I can't imagine they're not dangerous if you could come across them in public lands, right? I'd imagine, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly stay clear. I imagine there's a lot of unstable ground there. But again, the uh, agencies that can be responsible for it kind of differ. It really depends on how big the mess is. It could be the yeah. EPA. It could be a local agency like the Forest Service or, again, the state is responsible for quite a bit of it, too. All right. We'll see how that plays out. All right. Thanks, Jude.